Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm putting this out there to test the water to see if anybody out there is actually doing further maths, which I believe is to be examined in the next week if you're watching this in June 2018. So in this video, I'm going to go through the first six questions of uh, AQA Paper 1 Further Maths from June 2017. If you're doing further maths, if you want the rest of this and paper 2 done, maybe even at Excel, if I have time, let me know down below in the comments section. Okay, let's get cracking. Okay, question 1 is asking us to draw on the grid below the straight line that passes through the point 2, 1 and has gradient 3 quarters. So, for this, we need the equation in the straight line, or actually, we just need the y-intercept. Remember though, y equals mx plus c. We know m is the gradient, so y is 3 quarters x plus c. We now need to work out c, for which we substitute the coordinates in. So we know this line passes through the point 2, 1, which means that y equals 1 and x equals 2. If we substitute that in, we get 1 is 3 quarters times 2 plus c. So 1 is uh, 6 quarters plus C, now 6 quarters is 3 halves, if we take that away we get minus 1 half is equal to C. So we could now draw our straight line, we know the y intercept is a minus a half, so that is going to be there, and the other point we know that our line goes through is 2 on so, we've got our point 2, 1 there. All we then need to do is join that up with a straight line, which I'm going to do off screen. Okay, so there's our line as if by magic. Jobs again for question 1. Okay, question two. So, a curve has equation y equals ax squared plus 3x, where a is a constant. We are told when the x equals minus 1, the gradient of the curve is minus 5. We want to find the value of a. So, first of all, we need the gradient of the curve, for which we differentiate. So, dy by dx, or y dash, as I write it, is going to be 2ax, it's a funny looking a, 2ax uh, plus 3. So that algebraically is the gradient of the curve. We are then told uh, when x is minus 1, the gradient of the curve is minus 5. So if we substitute those in, y dash, the, or the gradient, is minus 5, when x is minus 1. So, 2a times minus 1 is minus 2a plus 3. If we then subtract the 3, we get minus 8 is minus 2a, and then if we divide both sides by minus 2, we get... 4 equals a. So a is equal to 4. Okay, now question 3a is asking us to sketch the graph of y equals x squared plus 7x minus 18, labelling any points of intersection uh, with the axes, but we don't have to label the coordinates of the turning point or the stationary point. So, first of all, we can label the y-intercept, which is the number at the end, so that's minus 18. So, our graph is going to look something like this, where this is 0, minus 18. 
we then need to find the uh, x intercepts so to do that we solve the equation equal to zero for that we're going to use the quadratic formula which is given to us in the formula sheet at the start so by the quadratic formula we will get x is minus p so minus 7 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 7 squared is 49 minus 4ac so a is 1 minus 4 times 1 is minus 4 c is minus 18 minus 4 times minus 18 gives us positive 72 and then it's all over 2a 2 times 1 is 2 so we get minus 7 plus or minus the square root of 121 all over 2 which is minus 7 plus or minus 11 all over 2 so we got our two solutions then minus 7 minus 11 is minus 18 divide that by 2 gives us down here minus 9 0 or then minus 7 plus 11 gives us positive 4 divided by 2 makes this guy 2 0 like that and then part b asks us for the equation of the line of symmetry for our graph so quadratics are vertical uh, sorry symmetrical vertically down the middle so we want the equation of the line that goes through the turning point now the x coordinate of the turning point is exactly halfway between uh, the two x intercepts so we want to find the midpoint of uh, the uh, we want to find the point exactly halfway between the two intercepts so add them together minus 9 uh, add 2 gives us minus 7 and divide that by 2 minus 7 divided by 2 is minus 3.5 so the equation of our line is x equals minus 3.5 jobs are good ok question 4 we got some straight line geometry going on so a single line passes through the three points minus 4, 7, 6, minus 5 and 8, t we want to use an algebraic method to show how to find the value of t. So there's loads of different ways we can do this. The way that I'm going to do it, find the gradient between the point, the first two points. Then we know that the gradient between one of those points and the third one has to be exactly the same because each point lies on a straight line. We can then set the gradient as equal and find the value of t. So, first of all, the gradient between minus 4, 7 and 6, minus 5. So remember the gradient is difference in y over difference in x. So the gradient of the line between these first two points is going to be minus 5 minus 7 over uh, 6 minus minus 4. Now minus 5 minus 7 is minus 12. 4, oh sorry, 6 minus minus 4 is positive 10. So that gives us a gradient of minus 1.2. So we know the gradient of this line that passes through these three points is minus 1.2. Let's now find an expression for the same gradient in terms of t. So let's go for the first point and the third point. Then we're going to get difference in y over difference in x is going to be t minus 7. t minus 7 over 8 minus minus 4. So we're going to get t minus 7 over 8 minus minus 4 is positive. 
So now we know both of these things, minus 1.2 and t minus 7 over 12, are exactly the same. So we set them in equal to each other. t minus 7 over 12 is equal to minus 1.2. If we multiply by 12, then we will get uh, 12 times minus 1.2, or 10 times it is minus 12, 2 times it is minus 2.4, so we get t minus 7 equals minus 14.4. If we then add 7, we get t equals minus 7.4. Jobs again. Loads of different ways we could have done that. That's probably the most straightforward thing. Okay, question five. So x plus four times x squared minus kx minus five is expanded and simplified. The coefficient of the x squared term is twice the coefficient of the x term. We want to work out the value of k. So for this, we could expand this whole thing, simplify it, but we don't need to. If you want to do it like that, and you're a little bit rusty, check out my video on expanding triple brackets. We're going to be a little bit more sneaky. We only need the x squared term from the expansion and the x term. So, first of all, let's talk about the x squared term. Which multiplications are going to give us x squared terms? Well, we're going to get 4 times x squared, so that's going to give us 4x squared, and we're also going to get uh, x times minus kx. Now that is going to give us minus kx squared. Now if we factorise that, we can get x squared times 4 minus k or 4 minus k times x squared either way around is golden so the coefficient of our x squared term is 4 minus k now let's work out the coefficient of the x terms so what multiplication or multiplications are going to give us x terms. Well, 4 times minus kx, that's going to, so that's going to give us minus 4kx, and then also uh, x times minus 5 is also going to give us an x term. So we get minus 4kx minus 5 x. Now we can factorise that to give us x lots of minus 4k minus 5 or minus 4k minus 5x like that. So we've now got our coefficients Let's remember what we were told, because I've forgotten. So the coefficient of the x squared term is twice the coefficient of the x term. So that means then that uh, 4 minus k, 4 minus k is twice minus 4 k minus 5. So we now have an equation in terms of k that we need to solve. So, on the left, <coughs> we've got 4 minus k. On the right, let's expand. We've got 2 times minus 4k, which is minus 8k. And then 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. If we add 8k to both sides, we get 4 add 
7k is equal to uh, minus 10. If we then take away the 4, 7k equals minus 14 divided by 7, k equals minus 2. Jobs again. K question 6. So as I said at the start of the video, this is going to be the final question. If you want this paper finished off, maybe even paper 2 uh, done, then either drop me a comment down below, message me on Facebook, there is a Maps for Mail uh, Facebook page. If you found this useful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and also get subscribed to the channel, I will love you forever. Okay, question 6. We want to factorise fully x plus 6 to the power of 4 plus x plus 6 to the power of 3 times 3x plus 4. So we want to do this without expanding the brackets, which is good. So can we spot any common factors? We can. x plus 6 is a common factor. It's not just x plus 6 though. x plus 6 cubed is actually a common factor here. So we can write this as x plus 6 cubed times, well, x plus 6 to the power of 4 divided by x plus 6 cubed is just x plus 6 and then x plus 6 cubed times 3x plus 4 divided by x plus 6 cubed is just 3x plus 4. So, inside of our square brackets, we are left with uh, x plus 6 plus 3x plus 4. So, inside of there, we now want to simplify. So, x plus 3x is 4x, 6 plus 4 is 10. So as I thought we might, we've got another common factor in there of 2. So all that 2 can do is sit on the outside like this. And then inside the big square brackets, let's just write them as normal brackets now, we divide by 2. So 4x plus 10 divided by 2 is 2x plus 5. Nothing else we can do, that's fully factorised. Okay guys, hope you found this useful.